Well, our speaker today, Angelika Bendrich, grew up in Germany, in the countryside, on an idyllic farm where their family grew their own vegetables and even had some animals as well. So it's no wonder that Angelica is an excellent cook. She can make super healthy food taste like a gourmet delight and almost too good to eat, it looks so attractive. And our musician, Holly, has been an outstanding musician for about four decades now. She probably started as a kid, right? She plays now in a band called The Wilds with her partner, Kevin Wright, and Nathan Aswell, as we all know. The Wilds use rocking music to teach school children about ecology and nature. So let's relax and listen now as Holly sings us into meditation with her composition, Rain. Take it away, Holly. Okay. This song is based on an old riddle. So see if you can guess the answer. I'm the torment and blessing of man. Rain, I am rain. Rain, I am Thank you. 
up in the ocean, one voice, one emotion, sing to me. One raindrop in the ocean, one voice, one emotion, My son is a cool stream, and my daughter is the fruit of the land. A rainbow is my bed, the earth my final resting place, and the torment and blessing of man. you now to join me as we settle into a comfortable position preparing for our guided meditation. Allow yourself to sit with your feet firmly planted on the ground. You might want to close your eyes or direct your gaze downward. Allow my voice to be your voice for the next few minutes. And as you take a deep breath in, expanding and softening, still sensing the sound of gentle rain, washing and cleansing over us, exhaling, Letting go of any tension. Release. Relax. Let go. Slowing down more and more with each inhalation and exhalation. I invite you to bring your attention to the space at the base of your throat. This is the point of emergence of space, which allows air and fire, water and earth to emerge. As you focus on your throat, as you inhale and exhale, Notice this space, the sensations, the feelings. Allow yourself to become aware of the nature of space itself within your throat and around it. Your voice box that allows sounds to arise. And I invite you in a moment to join in an OM sound meditation. I will play a recording and seven times the OM sound is inviting you to join in to the very sound of creation. The OM sound is considered the seed of creation. 
the essence of ultimate reality all-encompassing, unifying everything in the universe. And while you listen to the OM sound and join in doing the OM sound, I invite you to notice the vibrating in that empty space in your inner world, a space that is really not empty, but full of potential. And as you take another deep breath, you might need to adjust the sound on your volume button for the OM meditation. Exhaling with the sound of OM. arising, allow them to just come and go as you listen inward, feeling, being, and knowing in the stillness. And with your next inhalation, I invite you to gently wiggle your fingers and your toes. And when you're ready, bring yourself back and open your eyes. It is wonderful to be here with you this morning for my talk on heaven on earth. And my slides have disappeared. So give me a second to find them. Okay. <laughs> Let me ask you the following question. What do you think of when I say heaven on earth? Do you think of a safe place, maybe in your mother's arms or in your lover's arms, 
Do you think of someplace warm and dry, safe and happy? Maybe it's in nature, by the ocean, camping, listening to the raindrops. Maybe it's even the garden. Many people find that a garden can be heaven on earth. The scent, the aroma, all the stimulation for the senses can feel like heaven on earth. So much beauty. And I know for Will and Lori that is becoming a reality as their garden is growing and expanding. In my time with you today, I'd like to take you on a little journey to find where we're planting seeds, how to tend to them, and how to harvest them to create heaven on earth. If we consider that we have the verse John 1 to 3, John 1 verse 1 to 3 in the Bible that talks about, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him. And without him, not one thing came into being. Sounds to me like he's talking about a garden. But what's really going on here is considering that the word is at the beginning. The word that becomes flesh. And the word might be just the sound that we just practiced. Ooh, creating vibrationally from the subtle to the solid and that power of sounding communicating and the dominion of creating through our throat chakra you speak it and it becomes this is how the whole world comes into being nothing is created without that let's consider that what is God God is mind, the one mind containing all, and all ideas exist in that one mind. This is a quote from our founder, Charles Gilmer, from the Reveille Word. The word is the creative idea in the mind, which may be expressed by an individual when he or she has fulfilled the law of expression. You have to speak it to create it. According to Charles Filmer, keep it true then. So let's take that word and replace it with idea. Then the whole quote would read, in the beginning was the idea, and the idea was with God, with the mind. The word or the idea was mind. The idea in the beginning with mind. All things come into being through him, the idea. And without the idea, not one thing comes into being. You have to think it to create it. And that is an amazing thing, to have this power to create. Charles Schumer says that man is given all the power and authority over all the ideas of infinite mind. And the idea of wisdom is one of them. Comes through our applying of the 12 powers. And Adam and Eve in the beginning in Genesis were given the dominion of the power over the Garden of Eden, the first place of heaven on earth, where all needs were immediately met. They had nothing that they were wanting for. And yet, what happened? They oh, found their way out of the garden by eating the fruit from the tree of knowledge. Knowledge, to know what is right, to know what is wrong, to shaft what you want to keep and what you need to let go of. The wheat from the fruits. So how do we create heaven on earth? If we have these 12 powers, how can we use them? Who are we with those qualities inside of us? Meet your inner team to help you create heaven on earth. We have faith which allows us to be a believer. I believe. You will see it when you believe it. 
versus I believe it when I see it. You are a believer. Therefore, having the willingness to see things can bring things about. Elimination is the power that helps us bounce things, eliminate things, let go of things, pull the weeds from the garden. Understanding is that inner knower in you that just sometimes has an intuitive knowing you don't even know how you know you just do. And zeal is the enthusiast in us that can create and have the energy and gear up energy for others to join in. And love. Oh, what would we be if we didn't have love? How do we know love? Through our inner desire that pulls us to want to create. Order helps us to adjust just what goes where in the garden. You know, some plants are good companion plants. And others, they're kind of better in opposite ends of the garden. It's kind of like people, too. Some are really good close together. And others, you just like to visit once in a while. Imagination is the ability to dream. If you can imagine it, if you can dream it, that's the first step in creating it. And life, life gives us that vitalization. With that, anything can grow. Wisdom is to help us evaluate again. Keeping, eliminating, so they work together, elimination, wisdom. And dominion, the power that we're focusing on in the month of May, that is really giving us the mastery, that sovereignness, our inner sovereignty, that rules, that makes the final decisions. Will and power and will work together to choose what do we want to empower ourselves with. And that gives us strength, which is stalwart inside of you. A powerful team of 12. How can we use it? Well, we can use this team of 12 unconsciously. It just hmm, happens or consciously to change the inner realm of thoughts and feelings and beliefs. Thoughts and feelings and beliefs. We have to become aware of them first in order to change them consciously. And then the best in us, the Christ quality, can come to be awakened, as Jesus has demonstrated, because he awoke those 12 qualities present in all of us to the best example. I have a little acronym of how we can use our three powers today. We've just had love. Next month, we're focusing on imagination. Currently, we're working on power, dominion, and mastery. That spells lip. Aha! Communicating. We need to use our lips to say what we have to say. Express our thoughts and feelings and beliefs. And with that lip, with love, with imagination, we can empower our message, our heart's desires, to create the heaven that we desire to have created. But in order for that to happen, kind of have to pull the weeds, eliminate that which doesn't belong. So the Garden of Eden then becomes the Garden of Weeden. When we look at power, dominion, mastery, used from our ego personality, which is linked in our physical desires and wants and enthusiasm, bringing heaven and earth together, the ego and our divinity that brings our ability to master, dominate, control, based on our senses, what we think, what we believe, and what we feel. We use the dominion to master any new concept or idea. Do you remember the learning curve we were under when we had to learn how to be on Zoom for services, and now we've been like a year and a half doing it? Controlling our thoughts and feelings. Just because you think you're hungry doesn't mean you need to act on it. Just because you feel a certain way of discomfort and so forth, you can expand that. Have the feelings and thoughts and act on it anyway. You could feel afraid and scared for something new, new learning concepts, and do it anyway. And thirdly, domineering and controlling. That helps us to take charge on the decisions that are ours to make. 
So when we look at the first garden, the first heaven on earth, when Adam and Eve were given that dominion, they had what we would call the creation of the one mind and the ideas of God as potential forces waiting to be set in motion through proper formative vehicles. And the thinking faculty in man is such a vehicle. And it is through this that the invisible universe has existed. Ideas and thoughts, they are our servants. Did you even think? that this wonderful spirit of divine ideas out of which everything is made here all the time is always present with us and we are using divine ideas the creation of that one mind and we can have our thinking faculty as the vehicle to create to make the invisible the thought idea into manifestation First, you plan to have a garden. Some gardeners say there's only three seasons, spring, summer, and fall. Mm, but not really. The fourth season in a gardener's life is the planning ahead. You envision what you're going to plant, where, and how, and when, and keep track of it. And next, you're going to learn from the experience and wisdom gained to grow the next garden, an even better plan. Talking about vehicles, <clears throat> let me ask you, do you remember the story of Noah who built the biggest vehicle ever, the ark, to have two of each animal taken to survive the flood? What did he do? Where did he keep the bees on that ark? He kept them in the ark hives. Makes sense, right? Just a little humor to transition into my next point. We've had the most amazing demonstration of the principle of think it and create it with our founders of unity. When they started out just like ordinary people, everyday people like you and I, and here we have now, 136 years later, Unity Village. And this is from the archives of the Timeline of Unity History. If you want to look it up, it is an amazing story of how Charles and Myrtle, our founders of Unity, had a dream. Did they just have a dream to grow a garden of their own? Well, there was a little more than that going on. They had heaven on earth ideas of they just wanted to be healthy and well. Myrtle had gotten very bad news. The doctor said that she wasn't going to have any more children and that she was going to die of a condition that nobody had a cure for. However, they found through their own healing journey of using their power of speaking, of creating, of eliminating what doesn't work and what they wanted to water this seeds on to grow, out of that personal journey came a new religious movement back in 1889 in Kansas City, Missouri. And Charles Fulmer was a real estate agent, and his wife Myrtle, mother of three at the time, she believed that spiritual healing had cured her of that tuberculosis that nobody could give a cure for. And as a result, the Fulmer began studying spiritual healing, and as a result of that, it grew and grew into what we know as our unity movement. Everything is really created twice, once in our mind and then in the outside world. We always have a choice in how we want to create, how we need to fight the inner battle like Myrtle did with our beliefs in our mind. So how did Myrtle do that? How did she do that? She did it little by little. By casting out those specific thoughts, eliminating them, weeding them away, that have accumulated and built up a false state of consciousness. And that is really remarkable, available to all of us, through what unity uses as denial and affirmation. Those are the tools that we use 
of gardening and weeding away which doesn't work anymore in our lives. When we look at a overview, our power of our inner desire, our love pulled us in. So Myrtle had a love for life, for her family. And she had a choice. She could choose what the doctors were telling her, that, you know, inheritance of sickness. But she instead chose to have a belief, a divine, divine idea of, I am a child of God. I do not in, inherit sickness as a child of God. I am healthy, I am free, I am well. And that choice, every day, and she would pray non-stop, 12 hours a day, choosing to believe, I am healthy, I am a child of God, versus, I inherit sickness. And that allowed her to get life and energize and vitalize the power of life taking over to the healing of living a right old age. We all have that choice. We all have that dominion, that sovereignty, the authority of what thoughts in our minds we want to water and grow, and which ones we want to pull out and eliminate. We choose, we have the power of will to give us. God has given us free will, choice is ours. And then you can get more or less energized and vitalized depending on the choices that we make on a daily basis. Well, for Myrtle, they were saying, well, you're not yourself today. I noticed the improvement immediately. People were coming to her house and said, I want what you have. And she started gathering people in her basement. And from there, they decided we need more space because more and more people wanted to learn the power of prayer, of affirmative prayer, affirming the right mind, the divine mind. And out of that came the dream to purchase land. We went to that land in 2019, we went to the fall conference. Desiree and Lori and Doreen took a trip in the fall. We started planning around this time of year and took an airplane ride to beautiful Unity Land. You see the tower in the background there? That is a significant landmark. There was first 58 acres of the present Unity Village that were bought in eastern Jackson County, Missouri. And other buildings were planned, right? ideas, planning, envisioning, dreaming, and then had to stop during the Great Depression and World War II. Started off in 1922. There is that magnificent tower in the center of the Unity Village, surrounded by gardens. There were growing walnuts and hazelnuts and pecans, and they were baking pies, and it, it was People were living there. In the beginning, people just came on weekends to visit and work on it. But then it became a whole village where there's now over hundreds of people living there. This tower we're looking at is 165 foot tall. And it's a silent unity building known as the Education Village, constructed by Unity Village. The tower contains 100,000 gallons of water tank that provides fresh water. It also houses a Caribbean that chimes music at different times of the day. I went up on that tower with a group for the conference, and the acoustic up there is phenomenal. Great place to chant OM or any other music. Sometimes we get recordings from live music being held in that tower. Around the tower at the base, you see a circular path, and there are stations with benches to sit and meditate in the garden, and little symbols that I will give you more detail on. Myrtle Filmer made her transition. She died at age 86, when she that was twice as long than the doctors had given her. People call her the mother of unity, and she saved many of the letters that she received, as well as the responses, which are about the healing power of prayer. Her beliefs are the foundation of unity till today. And that prayer garden, that is at the base of that tower, the 24-hour prayer ministry, answering a record-breaking number of prayer requests, 2 million in 1998. It is phenomenally powerful and it is so wonderful to be aligned with this movement. That circle around the tower 
is a prayer garden at the heart of our unity movement. And it's divided into 12 prayer patios. Each patio is graced with one of the 12 power sculptures. And then you can meditate to your point of understanding, proceed it clockwise and ending at release. Understand, will, imagination, faith, zeal, power, love, wisdom, strength, order, and life to release. It is a phenomenal experience when I was there, sitting in each of the stations of the garden. Here's a wonderful thing. I don't know how many of you are talking to their plants. They love to listen. They love being talked to. I am certain that plants grow better when you talk to them. And I grow when I talk to plants, as I improve my communication skill. Remember, you have to speak it to create it. What, your, what is your heart desire want by speaking it? Plants can help us and we can help them. Just sitting in a garden, talking, meditating. The 12 power garden, prayer garden, has these sculptures that a wonderful man built. His name is Barry Eisenhart. And he sat in meditation to get inspired for each of the symbols for the 12 powers. The inspiration that came for the prayer garden, each one represents one of the 12 powers that were founded by Charles Filmer. Here is the power symbol of release. And it has this beautiful plaque. Each of the 12 powers have a beautiful plaque. I release my past, my fears and cares, I let go of the struggle and strife. I surrender to this moment. I open to the divine flow of life, the power of release. That every day we need to choose what do we want to let go of in order to make room for the flow of life to always vitalize us. Here is the symbol of the power or dominion. And look at that sheep. What does that remind you of? Doesn't it just look like the tongue and the power of speech that is giving us that amazing ability to create? Here is a symbol of a garden invitation at Unity. And as you can see in the distance, this is where a lot of weddings are being held. The ultimate power is to say, I do, and to commit to living life and loving each other strongly. So Unity Village has many, many, many weddings, outdoor weddings in this beautiful garden space. This garden is in the inner circle of the prayer tower. So where I'm standing, to the right would be the tower going up, where the light is always on, 24 hours, prayers being given verbally or just being prayed over. If you write a prayer request, they hold it for an entire month and pray over it. And this internal garden is a peaceful, tranquil space. Walking into this building, I had a aroma of, oh, what beautiful cleaning supply Mark Baby is using. It's so flowery. It wasn't. They are not using any scented chemicals for cleaning. What I was actually aware of was the essence the smell of prayer. It, it's so tangible, you can smell it. It's incredible. On the far corner, if you look to the top left, would be the chapel where they're holding the prayer circle in person, or they were, <laughs> they might again, in person in the chapel <laughs> every morning at 10 o'clock. And it's also being held for indoor weddings. So this is a beautiful garden space at Unity. Now, your mind is just like a garden, and our thoughts are the seeds, and we can grow flowers or we can grow weeds. What are we planting today? What are we thinking of today? Your thoughts are like an outfit. What would you like to wear today? I think this is a marvelous day. Wayne Dyer was saying, what, do you, what thought do you have first thing in the morning when you wake up? Do you think, good God, morning, or do you think, Good morning, God. Either way, we have a choice. The Rose Garden was planted in 1952. 
and today this garden has expanded to hold 800 bushes with nearly 50 different kinds of roses. And they have a beautiful aroma and the sight of them are just so stunning. There is always a way to create in your life to eliminate that which does not serve you anymore, to grow that which you want to create, to have heaven on earth. And with each of our power to choose and plant and grow and eliminate and energize, we have that power to create heaven on earth. There's always a way if you encounter things that give you challenges, that you just feel like, oh, there's so many losses. We've had so many losses since COVID started. How can we create heaven on earth in the middle of experiencing loss and grief? Consider that we gain understanding and we gain wisdom. This beautiful poem says that after a while you learn the subtle difference between holding a hand and chaining a soul. We have loved ones and they are free to go, sometimes by choice, sometimes by death. You learn that love doesn't mean possession, and company doesn't mean security. And you begin to learn that kisses aren't contracts and presents aren't promises, and you begin to accept that the seats with your head up and your eyes ahead with the grace of an adult, not the grief of a child. And you learn to build your roads today because tomorrow's ground is too uncertain for plans. Futures have a way of falling down in the fly. But after a while, you learn that even sunshine burns if you get too much. So you plant your own garden and you decorate your own soul. Instead of waiting for someone to bring you flowers, you can grow your own. You learn that you really can endure in this hardship of COVID and other challenging times because you really are strong and you really do have worth. And you learn and you learn with every goodbye that you encounter, with every loss, you learn. If there is no way, you can create one because you have the power, dominion, the mastery, the sovereignty inside of you. Here's some advice for you gardeners. Grow peace of mind. If you don't know what to plant, plant peace of mind. Grow lettuce to be thankful and squash selfishness. Turn up to help thy neighbor and always, always, always make time for your loved ones. In prayer and meditation by picking up the phone and telling them that you love them. It's important for them to hear with important for you to say it. The signs of our times are only time will tell because stormy times can be ahead. Times, however, are always changing. And there will be better times on their way. Time is money and we can plant time. Plant, planting time is important. Till the end of time, there is never enough time Time to go and getting to the end of my presentation. So have a good time in your mind, in your heart, in your garden. If I ask you now, what do you want to create for your heaven on earth? You will have the power. Each of us have the energy of the 12 powers. And I invite you to use the power of dominion in your thoughts and words, which will lead to action and new creation. May you grow a beautiful garden in your hearts and minds to create heaven on earth. And let's listen to Karen Drucker as she plays, I've Got the Power. I've got the power to make all my dreams come true. There's nothing I can't do I've got the power to 
my time thinking That someone else is gonna do it all for me I've got to get up, get out, get it Just get started Take one step towards my destiny I'll define my direction With clear-cut intention Declare what will be And then watch it come to me Cause I've got the power To make all my dreams come true I've got the power There's nothing I can't do I've got the power To be anything I want Just no good Days when I don't even want to try But when I stop, look and listen And surrender I hear a voice of truth I cannot deny And it says, you know you can do it Just get down to it Have faith in yourself And the will to see it through have the power and the authority to say thank you to Angelica for your enlightening and reassuring message. We all need to hear that now. And Holly, thank you so much for your inspirational and deeply heartfelt songs.